Well, it's never been a surprise that a lot of the Metal Blade 2 Battle developer blogs have sometimes been rather lackluster. And that's why in today's Mountain Blade developer blog update is going to be a little bit different. Because yes, there has been an update about trading and things, but there's been some little bits of news here and there about Bannerlord that I sort of wanted to bring to light, but they weren't big enough bits of news to really make their own video. So I'm doing this one video here with some tiny bits about the very lackluster developer blog with nothing really in it, and of course, some extra news. Shut up, window. Ugh. Quickly before I get into the video, make sure you check the links out into the description to go into Aniba Games. You can get some great deals on pretty much any game. I mean, Kingdom Come Limits is £17 and it's like 40 quid on Steam, so it's sort of a no-brainer. All the Total War games, pretty much any Steam games, but not even just Steam games. Any platform, Xbox, PS4, whatever, you can click the links in the description and support the channel. I mean, Mountain Blade, the full collection is like £3 and that's got everything in, so I mean, you might as well. Make sure you go and use code RESONANT to get a 3% discount. Links in the description and if you register now, which you don't have to, but you can, you also get another euro off it. So, that's something you can do if you have the time and want to support the channel. First off, let's get this straight out the way because there's been a lot of people that have been worried about the whole influx of the Epic Games Store where Epic Games have been paying massive amounts to game companies now to put their games on Epic Games. Now there was a whole deal before where they'd get a much bigger percentage of the game when they sold them. I don't know if that deal is a still thing on Epic Games but it's no secret that they have been buying up a lot of companies. New games that were going to come out on Steam have now been moved across. And yes, even massive games franchise like Anno have become an Epic store exclusive now which blows my mind how they've managed to do that but kudos to them but it has annoyed a lot of people and of course a lot of people were worried that this would happen to Banlord. Now we do already know that Banlord has a page on Steam that's that's obvious you can go and check that out if you want but of course so I'm putting the forums is this going to be an epic store exclusive because that is a worry that can happen sometimes and we've seen the trend in games these days but rest be assured Callum has replied and set everyone's minds at ease and he says that Mountain Blade Bannerlord will be released on PC on Steam and various other places including the Tailwords website so he doesn't specifically say it won't be on the Epic Game Store but he is saying that it will be on Steam. So it won't be an exclusive, which I think is the thing that people really wanted to hear there. We don't, I don't think people will really mind if it's on Epic Game Store, if it's on wherever, if it's on Humble Bundle, if it's on Steam. But as long as it's on Steam, because that's where most people still play off, I think that's the really important place for it to be. Now, so many people leave comments about it being on console. There's not 100% confirmation for this. There's been hints at things coming later, later, years down the line for maybe putting on console war bands on console now so it's likely that maybe three four years after the release of battle that could be possible but that's not something that they're really thinking about yet but let's talk a little bit and get this developer blog out the way this is talking a bit about economy and trade now of course in the mountain blade games economy and trade seems to be more of a secondary factor especially in war band it never really seemed to be the focus yes you wanted to get money but once you'd gone and raided a few towns and then you do sold a few things that would be it once you had the money you didn't really need to do it anymore but now there's certain things that you can do throughout the the game that will award you with XP, it will award you with better relations and renown with people and this includes trading and being merchants. You can, of course, decide not to build up an army, not to have a big fight and empire. You could just be a merchant, go and selling stuff. You can trade from towns and cities, but there's a whole economy and trading system. Being able to block off other people's trading systems to stop them from getting their food or resources to their armies, which means they won't be able to spread as far, but the AI can also do that to you. Now, you can check out the developer blog. There'll be a link in the description because it goes into all the statistics about how it's all worked out. For example, a town with a prosperity of 5,000 will allocate, for example, 500 denars to spend on grain, 400 to spend on meat, and 200 to spend on butter. Of course, it's got to be butter. And then that's all allocated with budgets to different places to how you can purchase it. So each town has its own allocated set amount of prosperity and that's traded out throughout their resources and of course one place might put more prosperity or numbers towards their grain that's the place that you want to go to get grain and for etc each resources but that's really tiny developer blog i was reading through it and there's really nothing that i can make a whole video on which is why this is sort of just a general battle lord video not its own developer blog but let's talk a little bit about some of the other things that i wanted to include in this video there was a really cool tweet by mod db if 
anyone doesn't know ModBB is a site where you download mods. It's short for mod database, I think. So you can go on, you can download mods, and especially for Mountain Blade Warband. Before the Steam Workshop integration came along, that was really where you got all your mods, and that's why I still download all the mods today. And they showed an article today, which was sort of an interview with a developer on the mod for Mountain Blade 2 Banlord Kingdoms of Arda. Now, I have actually made a video on this in the past because this mod was announced a while ago and as you can probably tell by the title it is a lord of the rings mod now it is a single player lord of the rings mod we don't really know much about it of course you can't really start making the bulk of the game before the game is out and i know it annoys a lot of people that these guys want to start a mod before the game's out but you can do so much modeling textures music sound design story plays scripts everything that they're in set from the actual integration in the game can be done now they've said that they want to release this mod probably approximately six months after the release of Banlord if all goes well but of course that's probably going to be put back knowing the theme of Banlord related content but yes this is a Lord of the Rings mod and the reason I wanted to bring this to attention because there's an article about the music of it and I love music I study music at the moment I thought this was a really interesting article that I thought I'd bring to your attention if you want to look into how they're doing it because yes a lot of mods for Warband have when they're based off Lord of the Rings and other TV shows like that, just tend to use the music, the copyrighted music, which, you know, is fine for private play, and if they're not making any money off it, that's absolutely fine. But, of course, it's hell for YouTubers and things like that anyway. But this goes into how you can look through how they've made the music and the structure behind it, and it actually gives you an insight to how the development of the mod's going on. It looks extremely detailed and incredible, and I am so excited to get this. You can see on this Excel spreadsheet that they've put out how many pieces of music that they're putting in things for tiny little bits so when you're playing as Mordor you have a main theme here that's apparently the status of that is in beta I mean you see the duration of it that's 2 minutes 17 seconds here there's a piece of music for when you're victorious as Mordor and of course another one for when you're victorious as Mordor to have some variation and defeat ones and all that sort of stuff when you're just walking through Mordor the lands of shadow evil does not sleep there's all these sort of things that they're putting all this effort into it and I know this is not something that many of you guys will probably care about but I just thought this is a really interesting article but also brings me on to another Lord of the Rings mod this this is gonna be sort of a Lord of the Rings mod video if I'm gonna be honest for Mountain Blade 2 Banlord like I said this has been in development for a while and I think this one is probably going to be an extremely popular mod persistent kingdoms is somehow still active in warband its predecessor of course persistent world which is probably the most popular mod for Mountain Blade warband and I mean, I don't know how it's still active. Actually, no, I do, because it did something completely different. It made Mountain Blade Warband a multiplayer open world role playing game with factions sieging each other, going collecting resources, having a hierarchy. It created a whole world within Mountain Blade, and you know, a very similar thing is coming to Banlord. Now, there's already been a mod that is sort of the persistent world for Banlord that we've seen, but this one I didn't actually see until I was reading through the music one for Kingdom of Arda, and they gave a link to this one. This is called Chronicles of Middle Earth. And just on the mod DB page, a quick description of this. I mean, the acronym for it is come which is a bit interesting but it's a multiplayer open world mod for mountain blade 2 banlord the mod takes place in jrr tolkien's lord of the rings universe and puts forth a fully community orientated gameplay and active community roleplay system so from what we're getting it seems very much like a sort of persistent world lord of the rings thing now this has been tried in warband before it didn't go too well but i think that's because persistent world was such an active mod that it was so much effort to move over into you know a new mod of the similar thing just with lord of the rings so that's why a lot of the persistent world spin-offs haven't done too well but if they can get this in early in the start of Banlord's lifetime, I think this is going to be incredibly popular. Just imagine there's a massive open world having different factions, but all set in Lord of the Rings. Having people going out as serfs, going chopping down trees, going mining. They're taking it back to their castles, and then smiths and craftsmen make cloth armor, making some heavier armor if you trained to do that, to smelt in the forge. And then you can make swords for the knights that can come, and they can have orders by some high-ranking officers which have better armor, and that 
that sort of economy and then a lord that rules over it all going sieging with other factions and clans having a whole economy system alongside this whole military hierarchy as well i think these mods are really incredible and it makes me so happy that the mountain blade community have come up with something like this into the game and it's proven to be so popular with persistent worlds and persistent kingdoms i just hope that the same can happen for this one but i know this has been a little bit of a mismatched ban lord video it's been a lot of different things because as i said at the beginning i didn't want to make a whole video on the economy and trade dev blog i know some people might have liked that but i didn't think there was enough content to really do it and then we had this sort of thing from you know the lord of the rings mods coming out the talk about epic games store and war band or, i mean ban lord going over to that so i sort of wanted to include those bits of news into it and, and leave it in the comments if you prefer this style if there's a dev blog like this that doesn't have all that much content on it and there's loads of scattered bits of news for ban lord if you want me to put them all into one video or split them into separate ones i i mean if i made a video on each of these separate things i'd get a ton more views but honestly i don't think they'd be any more than a minute long each because there was really not all that much information but, but i think putting them together seems a bit more fit with these smaller bits of information and then having you know a nice video where everything is together but tell me what you guys think down in the comments but thank you so much for watching guys make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already leave a comment leave a like come on my discord and if you like my content support me on patreon but thank you so much for watching guys and until then i'll see you in the next one